Lord laid a song in my heart tonight. I um, had the opportunity, the privilege and honor of seeing another soul pulled from the fire this afternoon. Amen. And I want to confess to you that I didn't want to talk to him. I did not want to talk to that man. But uh, just like Jeremiah, there was a, a burning inside me. And when I didn't, I didn't want to talk to him, but I just couldn't not. And uh, the song I'm going to sing is uh, So Little Time, uh, written in uh, the music and words are by Dr. John R. Rice. And uh, it speaks true of the harvest that's before us. And each one of us needs to be faithful to answer that call. will be over our reaping done we reapers taken home report our work to Jesus Lord of harvest and hope he'll smile and that he'll say well done today we reap or miss our golden harvest today is given us lost souls to win. Oh, then to save some dear ones from the burning, today we'll go and bring some sinner in. How many times I could have strongly pleaded, how often did I feel to strictly the Spirit moved, oh, had I pled for Jesus. The grain is fallen, lost ones not reborn. Today we reap or miss our golden harvest. Today is given us lost souls to save. Oh, then to save some dear ones from the burning. Today we'll go to bring some sinner in. The harvest white with reapers few is wasting, and many souls will die and never know. The love of Christ the joy of sins forgiven. Oh, let us weep and love and pray and go. Today we reap or miss our golden harvest. Today is given us lost souls to win. Oh, then to save some dear ones from the burning. Today we'll go and bring some sinner in. Amen. Thank you very much, Brother Tom. Thank you, Carrie. And uh, you say John R. Rice actually wrote that. You know, for sure, we all can agree that uh, not only... Is it important that we, uh, you know, sing these wonderful hymns and many of these songs that were written over the last uh, several years, but also to get to know who wrote them. And you know, when you uh, hear a song sung like that, and you know a little bit about John R. Rice, you know he lived what he, what was just sung. Amen. Amen. How many? How many know who John R. Rice is? I know many of you do. How many have read? Uh, well, I know several of you have read uh, uh, at least one book from John R. Rice, hey, haven't yeah. you? <laughs> yes. And what would be the name of that book? Golden Paths to Successful Soul Winning. Golden Paths to Successful Soul Winning. That was written actually in 1960. 1960. That was before Will was born. How about that, huh? That was a long time ago. Long time ago. Uh, well, it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> Just remember there was somebody else born in 1960, wasn't there? Yes, Mrs. Miller. That's why we celebrate 1960. It's a very special time, amen? Okay, I think it's time to segue right into the scriptures. What do you say? How about we turn in our Bibles to Genesis chapter 37. Genesis chapter 37. 
And you know, I'll tell you, I learned a long time ago, it's better to be loaded up and bring more than you might even be able to deliver than it is to show up with a half full load. Amen. And so we're going to do our best to get much of this in, but it's it's going to be intense and it's going to come rapid fire. Many of you Bible students, you're familiar with that. You get that every Monday night in Bible Institute. So so you can't complain and neither can anybody else. Amen. It's it's a continued study in the life of Joseph and you don't want to miss out. You want to make sure you you glean all that God has for you. Now, with that said, we're going to go ahead and do this. We're willing to read scripture around here. Genesis chapter 37. Genesis chapter 37, beginning with verse 12. And I'm going to just go ahead and begin there. Verse 12. And his brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said to him, here am I. Oh, there's so much to preach here. Preachers, so much to be found here. Notice verse 14. And he said to him, Go, and I pray thee, see whether it be well with, my, with thy brethren and well with the flocks, and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale to Hebron, and he came to Shechem. And a certain man found him, and behold, he was a... He was wandering in the field, and the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where, uh, where, thy feed, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, They are departed hence. And I heard them say, Let us go to Dutham. Uh, Dotham and Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dotham. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say, some evil beast uh, hath devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. That's pretty powerful, too. I remember uh, re-reading this and just kind of landing on that. And we shall see what will become of his dreams. Notice verse 21. Uh, and Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, that he might rid him uh, out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. And Joseph, and it came to pass, when Joseph was come unto his brethren, that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors was, uh, that was on him, and they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty. There was no water in it, and they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing uh, spicery and balm and myrrh, uh, going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit it if we... Slay our brother and conceal his blood. Come, let us tell him, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh, and his brethren were content. Notice verse 28. Then uh, there passed by uh, uh, Midian, Midianites, uh, merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph into Egypt. 
Now verse 29. And Reuben returned unto the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit, and he rent his clothes. And he returned unto his brethren and said, The child is not, and I, whither shall I go? And they took Joseph's coat and killed a kid of the goats and dipped the coat in the blood. And they sent the coat of many colors and they brought it to their father and said, This have we found. Know now whether it be thy son's coat or no. And he knew it and said, It is my son's coat. An evil beast hath devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. And Jacob rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his loins and mourned for his son many days. And all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. And he said, for I will go down into the grave unto my son mourning. Thus his father wept for him, and the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh's, and, and certain of the guard, or captain of the guard. Father, we do thank you, Lord. As I re have reviewed this story and continue to, to study the life of Joseph, I can't help but think, oh my. What a powerful, powerful story. But it's not just a story. This is a recounting of a real person who lived a real life, who has much to say to us, recorded for all eternity for us, is this, is this very powerful block of scripture that speaks in volumes to each and every one of us. And so even tonight, Lord, while we may be familiar with this uh, passage of scripture and, and familiar with the life of Joseph, I know you have something for us, each and every one of us. And so, Lord, might we just uh, uh, ask for supernatural help to perk up and pay close attention to what you have for each and every one of us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll tell you, I was so excited about this, I couldn't even come up. I, it was hard to decide on a title. Hey, when the pastor has a tough time deciding on the title, you know he's worked up a little bit. Amen? I started out with this one, uh, and, and this is how it goes. The title would be, This is Good? Now, notice I had to, there had to be a little bit of, uh, of, of a demonstration there. This is good? In other words, a question. You mean this is good. Have you ever felt like life was that way? You're asking yourself this question. So this is a good thing. Another title would be God has a plan. God has a plan. Even while we may not think things are so great, God has a plan. Have you ever asked yourself the question? Who is in charge? What's going on here? Is this the best thing that could be happening? You see, when looking into the life of Joseph, one might ask that question. Is this a good thing? Is this good? Is this something that anybody would ever want to see happen? You know and I know that we can get used to saying things, like your pastor says, that God is on the throne. God is in control. And we can say it and not necessarily believe it. We still have to wrestle with the fact that we think our circumstances really are uh, our major focus. And they're not. They're not. Everything that is happening, everything that has ever happened, God is right smack dab in the middle of. I'll tell you, I want to talk about something tonight that I don't think we talk enough about. And that is God's sovereignty versus our free will. How does it all work together? How do you reconcile that? Well, i got to tell you something. You believe the Bible. That's the best way to reconcile it. World War II. There was a soldier that was angry, and he demanded, he asked this question, why doesn't God stop this war? I'll tell you what. It was, it was a difficult time in, in world history when this war took place. A Christian soldier standing nearby answered, why should he? He didn't start it. Why should he stop it? He didn't 